Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week Wisdom and Legacy podcast. This is day 388 of our trek, and today is Philosophy Friday. Every Friday, we will ponder some of the basic truths and mysteries of life and how they can impact us in creating our living legacy. Today, we are continuing on our trek covering the cycles and seasons of life. In particular, we are moving forward and focusing on the summer season of life. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. As we are settling back into a more normal routine, there is so much exciting client work and podcast-related projects to work on that staying focused on one area at a time is a real challenge for me. I am unsubscribing to many of the promotional emails that I receive in order to minimize the rabbit trail distractions that they cause. Although much of this information is good and I can learn from them, with my plate already overflowing, I do need to focus on the most pressing projects that can be completed within the next few months. Since I love to learn and absorb new information, it is challenging to minimize these distractions, but a habit that is required in order to maximize my output. This reminds me of the summer season of life that we will explore today. Once your seeds of spring are planted and your plants start growing, you must be diligent to protect the growth by purging the weeds and insects of life that can easily destroy all the seeds that were planted earlier. You must also remember to keep the new plants sufficiently watered so that they will flourish and grow into healthy, fruit-bearing plants for the harvest time during the fall season of your life. Speaking of life and its season, let's head out on a trek for today as we move from spring to summer within the cycles and seasons of life within this section titled, The Growth of Summer. Success in life is not an easy matter, nor is it an easy matter for the seeds to push away the soil in its quest to find light and airborne chemicals that give them health. Progress in any form and happiness or success in any form requires a constant effort, for obstacles exist that might discourage you if you are weak or feeling undeserving. Overcome one obstacle in life and another appears to fill the void. Life is designed to be a story of achievement in spite of adversity, not in the absence of adversity. For without adversity, achievement could not exist. Do not blame the problems and challenges of life for your humbling circumstances. Does the seed complain because of the rocks it must grow over, under, around, or through? Would any worthy life exist on earth if all life were to surrender when first confronted with difficulty? The constant, unrelenting pull of life is downward giving cause for disappointment, despair, and discouragement. There shall always be a reason to give up. There shall always be a cause for complaint. But if you engage in complaining, you are adding to that downward pull of life. The only automatic things in life are the weeds and the insects. They need not to be planted nor cared for. Their existence is assumed in that they feed and survive on the good efforts of the industrious. The summer of life is a time to protect. It is a time for the constant daily effort to guard against the busy insects and the harmful weeds. The spring of life is a time for the creation of things of value, and those things require the season of summer for growing and gaining strength so that you might yield the result for the coming fall. The end of spring cannot bring an end to your efforts. Your spring effort ends and your summer efforts remain yet to begin. If your effort ceases at the end of spring, your neglect will make its haunting appearances. Your growth will turn to stagnation and decay. The insects and the weeds of life exist to test your will to succeed and your worthiness for life's rich rewards. Develop an understanding and awareness of the fact that all good will be attacked. It is life's way of qualifying those who are worthy and those who are not. The weeds of life are designed to turn confidence into doubt, trust into suspicion, patience into impatience, and effort into procrastination, worry, and eventual defeat. Do not invest your valuable time arguing how life is. The weeds, insects, rocks, and storms of life will laugh at you if you take time to viciously accuse them of being unfair. Are they unfair? Yes, but you cannot seek something for nothing, or the rich rewards of life without paying the price of waging war against those obstacles by increased activity and determination. Invest no time chasing the birds who seek to peck out your seeds or the insects who seek to devour your coming harvest. For if you make diligent effort to plant, protect, and preserve, There are not enough birds, insects, or other obstacles to destroy all your efforts invested in the spring season of life. Learn to accept the perpetual existence of negativity, and also learn that negativity always yields your constant effort coupled with your constant growing faith and positive attitude. As it is written in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. This is one of the many basic principles or truths in life, 
and only when you combine the efforts of planting with the mental effort of believing and the physical effort of constant attention to those things of value. Smile at adversity and take action to quickly eliminate it. Expect adversity, for it will surely appear. Be grateful for adversity, for it forces your spirit to grow. Your character is not formed in the absence of difficulty, but in your response to that difficulty. All things, even adversity, have a worthy purpose. Both of us, you and I, live in a world of causes and consequences. The harvest, which is our life as we now live it, is the result of the seeds planted at an earlier time. Some of those seeds were planted ourselves through unbreakable habits. Others were planted by our parents, teachers, and other well-meaning but often misguided people whose own poor thinking habits were passed on to us. In either case, our current attitude, finances, environment, lifestyle, and our view of our own future possibilities are called circumstances. And to change these circumstances, we must change the cause of those circumstances, which is ourselves. We must change our habits, our attitudes, our opinions, and often our occupation, residence, and even friends if circumstances are ever to change. Think about it in this analogy. A man visits the shop of a gardener and, without thinking or giving inquiry, selects what appears to be an attractive plant, which he purchases and takes home to plant in his yard. Many months later, he discovers that the plant has grown, matured, and now blossoms into a healthy poinsettia, to which he happens to be allergic to. To wish now that he had planted a rose or tulip would be foolish. The circumstances will not change because he dislikes the results. He alone is the cause of his watery eyes and runny nose. And so it is if you are a person who lives amid mediocrity. Whether the seeds which brought about this condition were placed into the soil of life by yourself or someone else is unimportant. To accuse others or to feel sorry for yourself or to continue rationalizing or making excuses is just foolish. Only a massive, voluntary, and effective assault on changing the causes is important. Direct your thoughts, conversation, and full attention to that if you wish to change those circumstances. Concentrate a good share of your idle hours on self-development by planning more, reading more, and investing more. Invest your time in worthy projects. Invest your thoughts toward worthy purposes. Invest your talents toward worthy occupation. Invest your affection toward a worthy recipient. And finally, reserve the greatest respect for yourself. For it is that image, what you perceive yourself to be, that determines your quality of life. And never forget that you were created in the very image of God, as it is written in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Let's face it, people and events are going to continue to hurt and disappoint you. Among those people will be those that you love most, as well as those you least know. Seldom is it their intent to purposely hurt you, but rather, a variety of circumstances, mostly beyond your control, will cause them to act or think in ways which can hurt you, your present feelings, your emotions, and the way your life unfolds. It has been that way for 6,000 years of recorded history, and your hurt or grief is not the first time a human has been deeply hurt by an inappropriate actions of another. The only way to avoid being touched by life, the good as well as the bad, is to withdraw from society. And even then you will disappoint yourself, for your imaginings about what is going on out in the world will haunt you and hurt you. Knowing this, there is but one solution that will support you when people and events actually hurt you, and that is to learn to work harder on your own personal growth than anything else. Since you cannot control the weather or the traffic or the ones that you love or your neighbors or your boss, then you must learn to control yourself. It is the only response to the difficulties of life that really counts. Do not doubt yourself, for where doubt resides, confidence cannot. Do not neglect yourself, for with neglect comes loss. Do not imagine yourself to be less than you are, nor more than you are, but seek always to become all which you are capable. Do not allow yourself to become arrogant or discourteous, for both characteristics are adopted by those who seek to cover their weaknesses. Do not waste your time regretting the past, but invest your time wisely by preparing for a better future. You are the fertile seed of God, the creator of all things, destined not to lie dormant, but to spring forth from the soil called life, and to grow upward toward unlimited horizons, overcoming all obstacles in the process. It is your destiny to tap your talent and to achieve all that which you believe yourself to be worthy, to love more, anticipate more, overcome more, plan more, attract more, and to enjoy more than you ever dreamed possible. Such is the standard of life awaiting your mental decision and your outstretched hand. 
You are deserving of more. You are becoming more, and you shall succeed. This has been a rather lengthy trail on today's trek, but one that we really need to take to heart, consider, and understand. The immutable laws of planting and harvesting are set by God and cannot be changed or violated any more than we can override the law of gravity. When you grasp this concept, you can then direct and achieve the rich and satisfying life that Jesus offers in John chapter 10, verse 10. Next Friday, we will change our season of life to fall, which is the time for harvest. Our next track will be Motivation Monday, where we will explore three short trails to help to motivate you and to bring value into your world. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our trek for today. Just as you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, we ask you to help us to grow Wisdom Trek by sharing it with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person when you meet with them and invite them to come along with us each day. If you'd like to listen to any of the past daily treks, they are available at wisdom-trek.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Wisdom Trek so that each trek will be downloaded to you automatically. I would also appreciate it if you'd rate and review us on iTunes or Google Play so that others will find out about us and join us on our Wisdom Trek. The journal for today's trek is available at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you on Monday.